اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والحمد للہ الذی جعلنا من المتمسکین بولایت امیر المؤمنین ولائمت المعصومین علیہم السلام والحمد للہ الذی هدانا لہذا وما کننا لنہتدی لولا ان هدانا اللہ والحمد للہ الذی لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يودي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الهمم ولا يناله غوص الفطن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا أجل ممدود فطر الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ووتد بالسخور ميدان أرضه ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب الله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على أعدائه مجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين عما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولكل أمة أجل فإذا جاء أجلهم لا يستأخرون ساعة ولا يستقدمون آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صل على محمد أما بعد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala There is no doubt that it's due to his kindness and generosity that he gives us these opportunities where we gather in glorification and remembrance of Him, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Then we begin this sermon the way the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhima afdalu salatu wa salam. Ya'ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. We'll begin many of his sermons by saying, Usikum ibadallah bi taqwallah. That I advise you, O the servants of Allah, to be God conscious, God fearing, and pious human beings. We have been on that final chapter of Quranic eschatology, the subject of death and life after death, as it appears in the Quran. And last week we were analyzing the lengthy tradition that was describing for us the life of paradise. Um, and some of the key points to remember is that no matter what descriptions are given to us about paradise, they are merely analogies and metaphors to help us get close to that understanding. But whatever the true pleasure will be or the true gifts will be, will only be understood once we enter into that realm. Furthermore, what we understand from that tradition is that one of the greatest joys that the inhabitants of paradise have is in their glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in listening to the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And furthermore, that joy is complemented with complete ease and satisfaction. Um, and that complete ease and satisfaction is at the highest degree in knowing that God at this point is completely pleased with me. Right? And that satisfaction of knowing that the Ridha Allah is there, the pleasure of God is there in me, brings me that complete joy which increases in my glorification of Allah, which adds to my joys uh, in paradise. We go into some more description now, and that is that um, in paradise there is this very strong link that exists between the phys physical and spiritual pleasures, right? Um, to understand this, you know, when we go back to the earlier discussions that we had, whether it was in dunya and the different realms of dunya, meaning this world that we are living in and the second realm of dunya, which is barzakh, we talked about how there is a link that exists between the human body, the material body and the spiritual realm, right? In this world in particular, the spiritual body grows 
the spiritual body understands and perceives through the usage of the material body. Right? As the material body goes into life and experiences different things, the spiritual realm begins to understand and comprehend different realities. Right? And the same applies in Barzakh, that when the spiritual body utilizes the imaginal body in Barzakh to undergo the different experiences that they are in Barzakh. However, many times the physical pleasures that are enjoyed here by the material body do not translate into spiritual pleasures. Are you all with me? Yeah? The physical pleasures that we enjoy in this world do not automatically translate into spiritual pleasures. Examples will be what? If, for example, somebody does something haram, in that act of haram, yes, they enjoyed some type of physical pleasure, but that did not make the soul happy. Right? My body may have been happy, but my soul wasn't happy. And so there was not a link that existed between physical pleasures and spiritual pleasures. Sometimes the physical pleasures could just be something arbitrary. Like for example, taking a warm shower. Right? I took a warm shower, that doesn't necessarily mean that my soul was uplifted with that warm shower. And so there is not always a link that exists between material pleasures and spiritual pleasures. And vice versa is true too. Right? Sometimes, for example, we gather here for the 23rd night of Ramadan and people who are here simply for their purpose of rituals and let's get the rituals over with, they will recite 30 du'as that night, yet they will not feel any physical satisfaction from those du'as. They will rather feel tired at the end of the day. Right? When the spiritual self increased, that did not automatically mean that the physical realm increased. And so you find that in this world, though the physical body and the spiritual body are part and parcel of one another, yet their experiences are different sometimes depending on the person and what they do. While in Akhirah, it is entirely different. Right? In Akhirah, the spiritual being and the physical being enjoy everything simultaneously. Right? It is like, as they say, they are two bodies or two faces of the same coin. Wherever that coin travels, they both feel the satisfaction and the pleasure from what they are enjoying. The physical body in Qiyamah, we understand from the traditions that we read, enjoy a tremendous amount of pleasure and a heightened sense of in the most heightened senses or in the most heightened levels, right? The eyes see the most beautiful things. The ears hear the most beautiful sounds. The taste buds taste the most beautiful foods. The touch feels the most beautiful surfaces. And the, small, and the nose smells the most delightful of fragrances. Every sensation that the physical body in Qiyama experiences is amplified to the utmost. Now, it is very hard to fully understand that, but we have to believe that, right? That in this world, yes, I'll see something beautiful, but in that world, not only will I see something beautiful, but I will see it at the most beautiful perception that can be seen, right? And that would be the mercy and grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind everything. The physical pleasures in turn have a tremendous effect on the soul. Right? The more one experiences the pleasures of Akhirah, the greater the ability of the soul to comprehend and appreciate the mercy and grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want you all to follow what I'm saying. Okay? Some of you look lost today. Okay? Are you with me? Yeah, salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. I know the time change has thrown us off a little bit, yeah? We're still waking up, but this is important, okay? The physical pleasures that one enjoys has a direct effect on the spiritual life or the soul of the human being, right? And the more one enjoys the physical pleasures, the greater their ability to comprehend and appreciate the mercy and grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so as the soul's receptivity increases, and understanding the mercy and grace, so too do the physical pleasures increase as well. You understand what's happening? It's remarkable. It's an infinite cycle, right? The more I enjoy physical pleasures, the more my spirituality increases. The more my spirituality increases, because now I can recognize God better, the more my physical pleasures increase. The more my physical pleasures increase, the more my soul's understanding will increase. And this continues throughout Jannah. 
Yeah? It is never ending where you can't say, well, now I have reached the utmost. No, you, great, you, you rose in spirituality, you, more, you get more gifts from God. You get more gifts from God, you rise in spirituality. And this is why there is never ending limits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And this is understood in one of the examples right? that we, I want to remind us of. That this is seen in the hadith, we just had to analyze it. We see in the hadith that first when the inhabitants of paradise enter paradise, what happens? They are showered with gifts. They were given robes of light, yeah? castles of light, yeah? attendants of light. They were given spouses, they were given all of these things, right? And when they received these things, what was the turn of that? What was the result of that? Their perception of God's mercy increased, right? They were to say, subhanallah, this is enough for me. But God said, no, there is more for you. So they go get the other thing. And then God says, no, there's another castle for you. And there's another castle for you. Right? These are just explanations. Once that physical pleasures were given to them, their soul's capacity increased. And when their soul's capacity finally increased, it was at this time that they were given permission to see the countenance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? They needed the physical pleasures to increase their spirituality to finally be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's countenance. When they saw the countenance of God, what did they say? They were filled with complete satisfaction at that point. Right? They say to Allah, our master, hearing your sweet speech and seeing the light of your countenance is enough delight for us. It is enough. Yakfi, we are good, Ya Allah. Allah says, no, now go back to your house. There is more there for you. Yeah? And when, because their spirituality increased, what had happened? It enhanced their physical construction. Right? So when they went back to their houses, what did their spouses say? Their spouses said what? That when you left us, you didn't look like this. You look far more beautiful now. Yeah? Why? Because they enjoyed the spiritual connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what is meant when Allah says in the verse, Lahum ma yasha'una fiha waladayna mazid. Yeah, subhanallah. That God says that they will shall have whatever they desire in it. And with us is still more, Allah says. Yeah? It is a never ending journey of the spiritual and physical understanding. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we enjoy this one day, insha'Allah. Wa akhiru da'wan an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد صدق الله العلي العظيم سمي عن محمد وآل محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين سريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين اللهم صل على خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين محمد اللهم صل على علي محمد وصل على سيد الوصيين أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب اللهم صل على محمد وعلي محمد وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين ما صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على سبت الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة ما صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصلي على علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة القائم المهدي محمد وعلي 
صلاة لا غاية لعددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لأمدها اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات وتابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد This is a quick reminder that because there seems to not have been enough connection today for those in the chairs please do not start your salah until the connections are established um, you would have to move up a little bit to connect if there isn't a connection to you, especially those in the gym. Uh, what I want to talk about very briefly today is um, we saw some very interesting developments come out from the usurped lands of Hijaz over the past week, um, where the current Saudi Crown Prince Muhammad bin Salman, uh, in an anti corruption campaign, has arrested uh, dozens of people. Um, and including amongst them were 11 princes of the royal family that he arrested. And this has shaken up um, the, some of the foundations within uh, Saudi Arabia or the usurped lands of Hijaz, as is more better to call it as. Um, and this is something that obviously needs to be understood, that what is happening there, because I feel that whatever is happening there um, is going to have tremendous uh, reverberations not only in Saudi Arabia, but also in the lands as we've seen already now with what's happening in Lebanon. And this will then even translate um, in how the West reacts to some of these incidences that are happening. Very interestingly, just as he was arresting these people almost simultaneously, uh, a helicopter carrying several Saudi officials, including Prince Crown, or former Crown Prince Mansour bin Mukrin al Saud, or sorry, just Prince. Um, crashed and died, and, and he died as well. So it was almost, uh, as we would call it, coincidence yeah? um, that uh, this happened simultaneously as the arrests what happened. You know, we need to, it's important we understand the political structure of what is happening in Saudi Arabia, right? Um, we understand that there are thousands of princes and thousands of these people that are there. Um, it's, it's important to understand the structure and why these certain events that have transpired um, are so important in that grand scheme of things. Um, I found this interesting that, you know, in 2015, when uh, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz al Saud, the, the 25th son of the original King Saud, um, became the king in 2015, uh, he was already 79 years old at that time. And generally, when you become king, or when he became, when one of these children became king, the next brother in line would become the crown prince. And therefore, after the king dies, that crown prince, who is the brother, would become the king. Right? Um, but considering that after this current king that is there right now, his younger brother Mukrin bin Abdul Aziz, um, he there was no other brothers after them who would take over. And therefore, automatically, this last brother who was going to be, who was the crown prince, his son would take over, right? And he, King Abdul Aziz, the current king, did not want the throne to go to somebody else's son. He wanted it to go to his own son. You all following what's happening? Yeah? And so, four months into um, the crown prince of the, the, the princehood of his brother, he removed his brother Mukrin from power and cited various uh, reasons of being ill health and all of these things. And what that did was that it removed that lineage away and he appointed his own son as the crown prince. Yeah? So this already caused a tremendous amount of tension within their own family structures, but now he was laying the groundworks for who would take over. And interestingly, that son of the brother is the one who died in the helicopter crash. Yeah? So you see like how all of these pieces are now uh, fitting together that it's not just coincidence, right, that we're talking about. There's a greater scheme in place. Um, and everyone agrees, right, that this power play by the current crown prince of arresting all of these people on charges of corruption, I mean, it's funny that an entire country built on corruption is now talking about corruption, right? Um, built on, on intimidation is now 
um, fighting against intimidation, built on extremism, now claims to be fighting extremism. Um, and so you find that he has been consolidating his power for a very long time. Um, he is now the defense minister. He is the chairman of interagency committee responsible for economic affairs, the oil of the country. He is, um, he's also gained power over the interior ministry and the entire police um, structure of Saudi Arabia. So he's taken all of these under his belt. And obviously, um, what's very interesting is that when you read articles, and this has been true for a long time, that no Saudi king or prince will ever be successful if America doesn't give the green light for that. Right? They are not an independent body or an independent structure who will survive without the uh, approval of American government or American agencies. And so in an attempt to appease America, the crown prince has taken several measures, like allowing women to drive now. Right? It was his call to allow that to drive. A promise to bring the Islam that is practiced in Saudi Arabia to a more moderate Islam, as he talked about. And, of course, he purchased $350 billion worth of arms from the United States. Right? There is nothing more, uh, there's no better way to satisfy them than to buy uh, products from them. Right? Um, and, of course, right, we know that these are the very arms that are killing innocent people in Yemen, right? These are the same arms, um, and this is why America is as guilty, right, in what is happening in Yemen as Saudi Arabia, because it is their green light of what is happening, and likewise, Canada as well, right? It is Canada who has given them these tanks and these uh, $10 billion worth of arms, I believe it was, $10 billion or even more, um, that are now in Yemen fighting, and this is why it's so important for us to understand what is happening because we are part of it, right? It is our responsibility to talk to our elected officials, to try and pressure them that this arms deal has to be negated because we are part of the system where we have that power of voting um, and our vote carries a lot of weight. These very incidences that have happened have caused now um, the, the Prime Minister of Lebanon to resign in Riyadh, right, which was a very um, uncommon occurrence, right, that why didn't he resign in his own country, but he went to Riyadh and resigned there after traveling there twice. You know, while others may warm up to this idea that, okay, look, he's bringing about positive change, we know that he is a valim. Yeah? We know that he is the one responsible be behind the attacks in Yemen. It is he who is fighting a proxy war with Iran um, and threatening the stability of Lebanon and Hezbollah through that. Right? We see all of this that is um, taking place and it's very important for us to try whatever is on our ability, right? whether it is talking to our elected officials, whether it is making these things public, but most importantly, it's important that we don't buy it up right? and say, oh, mashallah, good changes are happening in Saudi Arabia. We must be cognizant of what's happening, realize that this is a grand scheme of events that can cause much more catastrophic difficulties, and we'll see where this takes us. And I think most importantly, if we are believing that everything that happens has the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, in it, this will, inshallah, lay the groundwork of the coming of our 12th Imam even faster, inshallah. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in particular for the protection of our Shia brothers in Hijaz, uh, for our Shia brothers and all the believers throughout the lands that are going to be affected by these moves that are made. Wa akhiru da'wan. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi rahman ar-rahim. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ